right, today is the day. We finally have a 5.4 liter two valve modular Triton engine in the shop for a full timing set. Now I have a lot of videos on the 5.4.3 valve. Of course, we all know it's a very troublesome engine. Lots of repairs we made on that engine. Uh, but these ones are generally very reliable until they get up into the higher miles, which these all are by now. And they're gonna need a timing set sooner or later. Now I'm gonna show you the full timing procedure on the 5.4.2 valve Windsor engine right here in this 2003 F-150. Um, but I'm not going to show actually getting to the timing components because it does vary over the years these engines were used and of course the platform they are stuffed into. Uh, so I'll give you some general tips here and there, but then we're gonna get jump right into the timing procedure and show you how to do it and do it right. Now, now this procedure you may think applies to all two valve modular Triton engines. It does not. The 5.4.2 valve is a Windsor engine, whereas a 4.6 liter is timed a little bit different and there's Romeo and there's Windsor versions of the engine. So it gets a little complicated and it's a bit different. So we're just concentrating on the most popular, the 5.4.2 valve Windsor engine as you see here in this truck. So let's get over there and get started. All right, so here is a typical 5.4.2 valve engine compartment. Yours probably looks you know, pretty similar to this, a little bit more messy and complicated than the 543 valve, uh, but it's just the same. Hoses, components, bolts, and brackets, and stuff like that. So what I do when I come into an engine compartment like this, the very first thing, disconnect the negative battery cable and the positive, then we'll get the battery up and out of the way. Even if the tray stays, it's nice to hold tools, parts, and lights when we're working in here. And then I'll go right after all the big bulky items like this air intake snorkel here, the appearance cover, uh, the fan shroud itself, and then I'll get the fan out of the way. It's a 36 millimeter uh, hub nut on there and get that up and out of the way. And then everything will start to open up on here for you. Now what you need to realize on, on, on a vehicle like this and the job that we're doing, the timing job, all we need to do is get into the valve covers. Okay, we need to pull those off. And we need to pull off the front cover on here. So just think about it, what is in your way? A bunch of harnesses, hoses, vacuum lines, coils, uh, pulleys, stuff like that is in your way. You have some brackets right here for the power steering reservoir and the reservoir itself, some more tubes over here. Now the one thing you do wanna start uh, soaking now, because all these do have this, is the EGR tube right here. See the EGR tube going down and over the manifold? Well, up here, they usually, you know, they, they unscrew pretty easy. Um, just spray some rust penetrant in the nut right there, inch and sixteenths nut, and they'll usually come loose, but we need to pull the whole tube off because it wraps down around uh, this valve cover right here. So down in the wheel well, you will see, I sprayed mine already, right there. There we go. There is the uh, actual nut down here, the jam nut down here. Um, that goes to the manifold, these will be rusted pretty bad. This one's not that bad at all. So you're gonna need propane or a MAP torch or even an oxyacetylene torch uh, to get that nice and hot and loosen from the nipple on there so we can get that tube up and out of the way. So again, do whatever you need to do. Just look at it and think, what do I need to do so I can gain access to the valve cover on both sides and the front cover on here okay what's nice about these is that you don't need to drain the cooling system at all and you don't need to discharge the AC system at all because look look in the side here the AC accumulator see it back in there it's pretty far away from the valve cover so there's usually generally enough room once all these harnesses and that dipstick tube and stuff like that are out of the way you can leave the AC system intact so this is just this is definitely one of those jobs that a do-it-yourselfer can do in their garage without any real special tools. Okay, so before going any further, I wanna go over uh, my engine compartment here. You can see it's a big mess. But I wanna show what I take off to get access to those valve covers and the front cover there. So starting over here, yes, I do pull the battery in the battery box. And on mine, I did pull the AC accumulator because it's just easier for video purposes, but you don't need to remove it on yours. There's plenty of room to pull that cover off over there. Uh, so you can just kind of take a general look. All these harnesses are kind of tucked out of the way. Look at all of them on top of the intake there. And the same thing over here, you're pulling the coils, you're pulling these harnesses and all that stuff, vacuum lines. 
and just getting everything out of the way. Now the EGR tube over here, you can see it right here. Uh, it loosened up here, no problem, like they usually do. But down below, uh, it was stuck to the nipple down there. So the nipple and the pipe moved together. It's a real mess. Don't even fight it. Swivel it out of the way, as you can see here. And it gives you enough access to pull this valve cover off without opening a can of worms down there. And also, these nuts on this particular gear are an inch and a quarter. So make sure you have a big old wrench on hand for that. Some of them are an inch and sixteenths, some are an inch and a quarter, like the big boys. Same thing with the front cover area here. I pulled the fan and the shroud. Of course, all the front end accessory drive components. AC compressor stays in place. But the power steering pump, of course, you want to pull that off and lay it to the side. And then that gives us access to pull off the bolts and the front cover and the valve covers. So at this point, everything's free and clear. We can start the timing procedure. And we're going to start off by locking down each one of these cams. And then we're going to start removing all these old components and then start building up with new. Now, one of the very first things you want to do is lock down each one of these camshafts into place so they cannot move while we're changing out and removing all these timing components up here, the chains and everything else. If we don't do that, it's gonna, it could potentially flip over because they're under spring pressure, flip over violently, and then actuate another valve and put it down into the piston and damage the engine. You don't want to do that. So the way you lock them down is some guys use vice grips. I don't recommend it at all. Uh, is use a tool just like this. Now this is from OTC. It's uh, part number 511545. I'm sure there's cheaper versions out there. I'll link to them down below uh, that work just as well. Uh, but we're going to put one of these on each side and lock it down. I'll show you how to do that. And that'll hold it into place for us so it's safe to remove the timing components. Before we do that, though, we want to kind of pre-position the crankshaft and the camshaft so it's close and ready for timing once we start building it back up. So what you want to do is turn the crankshaft down there. You can see it down there. We're going to turn that with either a 6-point, 32-millimeter socket like this. slips right over it into the keyway, and you'll be able to turn it. Or if you don't have that socket, you can put the crankshaft pulley bolt back in and use a regular 18 millimeter socket and a long ratchet and turn the engine over clockwise so we can get these marks in line. Now what you wanna do is you wanna get this camshaft at the 11 o'clock position, get the timing mark on there, and this one at the 12 o'clock position. So it looks a little something like this. Here's the crankshaft and you can see the timing marks here. Okay, that's how what you want it to look. Now, I don't have dots on there uh, normally. They have these little marks like this. Okay, that's the timing mark on the sprocket. Not that. That's for the reluctor for the, um, the cam position sensor. And on this side, there it is once again. There's the uh, mark for timing right there. So we're going to turn the crankshaft clockwise to get this uh, basically in position and then we can lock down the cams and start tearing stuff down All right, so here's the critical pre-positioning step for the crankshaft and the camshaft You want to get as close as possible So there's minimal fidgeting later on to get these chains lined up Okay, so what you want to do is get your crankshaft Keyway that little woodruff key on there facing straight up. So that's 12 o'clock position. Right now you can see it's at what, like the 10 or 11 o'clock positions. So we're gonna turn it clockwise, always turn it clockwise. And we're gonna get it to the 12 o'clock position. As close as possible, you know, just with your eye. You kind of see where it's at. Pretty close. Now, with it at the 12 o'clock position, we can go ahead and we can look at the camshaft sprocket on here. Now remember that timing mark should be right around the 11 o'clock position on this side and 12 on the driver's side. You can see it's down here, it's way off. So we're gonna have to position this thing way around when we're timing and you don't wanna go through all that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get it close on both sides, because both sides are off right now. And we're simply going to keep turning this until we're at the 12 o'clock position again. So a full 360. And the reason you're doing this is because the cams run at half speed compared to the crank. So it's uh, two rotations of the crank for one rotation of the camshaft. So we're going to get it back up to 12 again. 
and we're going to look in our uh, marks on the camshaft sprocket that should be much, much closer on both banks. Just kind of visualize it, you know, right about there. It's 12. Well, okay now. There's our mark on this side. It's pretty close to 11. If you figure 12 is right here. Okay, so that's pretty darn close. And then we'll check out this side over here. And this side, yeah, it's closer to one over here. If 12 is right here, maybe two even. Uh, but it's close. We can just position it back a little bit, align the chains when we're going back and timing it. So everything looks good at this point. This is probably how yours is going to look. Crank at 12. And this one right about there. So now we can go ahead and we can lock down the cams. We're going to install that tool in the second row right here. So right here, undo the screws, clamp it around, clamp it tight while it's against the head on each side, and it'll hold it for us. So we're nice and safe pulling the rest of this off. Now with our cams locked down, as you can see here, just kind of clamps around it. We're secure. We can go ahead and we can start unbolting the chain tensioner right here, 10 mil bolts. And then we get the tensioner arm, we get the chain off, get it out of the way. We have access to the upper guide here, eight mil bolts, top and bottom, they are different. The long one's up here, short one's down here. Okay, now this tensioner right here is gonna leak a lot of oil, well, good amount right here onto your compressor. So I like to put a little rag right here and start unbolting it. Now, on yours, you may have cast iron uh, tensioners, whereas I think in 03, four valve, two valve, it didn't matter, they started using these plastic ones like you see in the uh, 543 valve that blow out just like that. Yeah, so these were around in 03, you just didn't uh, deal with them too much uh, because they didn't have VCT systems to cause all those errors by the blown out tensioner. Yeah, so. They've been around before we knew it. So we'll take these two bolts, put them off to the side for reassembly later. We can go ahead and get start pulling this uh, tensioner arm off of here. It's a little awkward working around the camera, but you get the point. You see this one? That's pretty bad. It wore through the plastic uh, outer layer here to the backing on there. And that's because the tensioner was blowing out and she's just beating on it, chewing into it. I think there's lots of miles on this one too, over 200 on here, so. And now you can take your chain off, it comes right off. Just do a little slop to it, and it pulls off to the side. And we'll go ahead and take these out. There's a short one. And here's the long one. On some of these engines, the chain guide is the old style, okay? And that, in that design, both the bolts are exactly the same. But on your new one, which is basically the same parts used in the 543 valve, this upper uh, bushing here is thick. It's all the way through on there. It's an improved design. So you're gonna need a longer bolt for this top one here, just like the 543 valves. And I'll put the part number down below, but basically that's the ones right there. You can see them in there. Much longer than the original ones. Okay, so you're gonna need to have that on hand, putting new parts in. Once the passenger side is off, you simply repeat the same procedure on the driver's side. and get these out, get tension off the chain, just like so. You kind of sneak it past. This one's blown out too. I'll pull our tensioner arm off of here. Watch out, it's gonna be full of oil on the backside there. Get Mr. Chain off of here. And then I'll pull the crankshaft sprocket off too. And then we'll zip off this guide right here also. The lower bolt is longer and the upper is the shorty. There you 
go. Well, what do you guys think? Not so bad, right? I mean, once you get the covers off of these engines and you get in here and you start unbolting all the timing components, they can be off in a matter of minutes, you know? At this point, we're gonna start the tedious task of, of cleaning up all these gasket surfaces for the front cover, the front cover bolts up to the head and the engine block and the valve covers. You wanna clean all those surfaces so they're nice and clean. Get your gobs of sealant out of here. Make sure all these cavities in the block and everything in the head here all cleaned out some compressed air before going back together. What I do is I stuff a, two rags wrapped together down here in this crevice to keep all the debris out of the oil pan while we're cleaning up here. And in on this vehicle, we're also changing the oil pump, which I highly recommend anytime you're in this far into the engine. Now I'm going to be installing the Melling M176 pump. It's a standard uh, pressure, standard volume, which is all these engines need, but it'll be all new from Melling, okay? The procedure is exactly the same as the 543 valve, and I have a whole video on that, how to do that in detail in vehicle. Normally you have to pull the pan to do it, but I have a trick to do it without pulling the pan. So I'll link to that video down below, and you can change the oil pump in yours if you're so inclined, okay? So let's go ahead and change those components out and clean everything up so we can start building the engine back up. All right, now with everything all cleaned up, as you can see here, our new oil pump installed, everything's good to go. Our crankshaft still at 12 o'clock. We can go ahead and we can start pre-positioning the camshafts for timing, okay? Now the way you do this is that you loosen these two bolts just enough, couple turns, one, two turns, so the, the, it'll still hold the camshaft, but we can turn it. And we're gonna use a tool like this, right here, it kinda sticks into there, and we can turn it and make sure our timing marks on the passenger side is at 11 o'clock, and on the driver's side, our, our mark should be at the 12 o'clock, okay? And that'll get it close, so that we can start uh, attaching all the timing components and then we lay the chain, we'll make sure it lines up in, into that correct mark on there to line up with that. So let's go ahead and do that. So mine are loosened just enough. I'll show you how it looks on here. It's pretty simple, but I figured I'd show you guys because it is a critical step. And this is like, this is totally different than the regular three valve stuff that I'm used to doing day in, day out. But you basically line up on there and then with our, our crankshaft at 12 o'clock, I'm almost positive, um, I don't quote me on it, but I'm almost positive that all the pistons are below deck, okay? Which means no matter how much you turn the camshaft at this point and actuate valves, they cannot touch any of the pistons in there. There's a certain sweet spot in every one of these engines where all the pistons are below deck and it's safe to turn the camshafts. And I think on this one, at 12 o'clock, it is. And that's the reason why Ford has us doing it now uh, before we start timing the engine. So what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna, you know, turn it with our positioning tool and get it as close as possible to our mark where it should be. So I'd say that's still a little too far off. I wanna be closer to 11 on here. So if this, is 12 right here sure that's 11 so that's pretty close right there we can go ahead and we can clamp this back down and be ready for timing and then of course once the passenger side is set you can do the same exact procedure to set the driver's side the driver's side of course needs to be at the 12 o'clock position which is straight up all right, now with these cams in position, we're all good to go. We're ready to start timing the engine. We need to set the crank in the proper position, which is number one, TDC. So what you do at this point is you go counterclockwise until this tool right here fits into that keyway right there, okay? So it has a spline on it for the crankshaft, and then it'll lock right into the block right there. So you turn it counterclockwise until it happens. So basically this keyway right here, which is at 12 right now, should be right around the 11 o'clock position and then it'll all line up. Very, very important, make sure you only go 
counterclockwise at this point. So again, we're just gonna do it by hand. And get right about there. See, we're a little too far, so we'll go a little bit more, and it's trial and error. Right there. Pull up just a little bit, wherever you need to do, up or down, to make it fit. This one needs to go down a little more, I think. There we go. See, so see how that works? We'll bring you in close down here. So you guys can see how it should look right there. So we turned the crankshaft counterclockwise, okay, to about the 11 o'clock position, this Woodruff key right here. And then that splines up and the tool lines right up to this alignment dowel in the block. And it should be just like this slide right on that sets the crank at number one TDC and of course we just set the cams in position and now we can start building up the timing components we're gonna install the upper guide on the passenger side first remember our new bolt that we bought goes over here at the top and that'll accommodate the new um, design. I'm gonna get these in by hand. There we go. And then a small one, the old small one, goes in down here. Again, you wanna do it by hand. Get them by, thread it in by hand. And then I'll just snug them down at first. Like so. And then we'll do the same on uh, the driver's side. Bottom bolt is longer. That goes through the oil pump down here. There's a hole for it right there. Again, make sure you thread it by hand. Fix that. And then this one up here will line up perfectly. A couple of threads by hand. Make sure we're in there. We can go ahead, snug them down, get it in position. Okay. And that twisting you saw, how it twisted into place, that is perfectly normal. So don't think there's something bound up or wrong when it twists back into place when you tighten it down. That's the way it should be. And then we're gonna torque these down to 89 inch pounds. Get these snug and torqued so they don't back out. And then you're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side, on the passenger side guide we just installed. Same thing, 89 inch pounds on both bolts. And that'll get those set. At this point, we're gonna start timing the engine. Our crankshaft is in the proper position with the tool down there. We torqued down our guides. We pre-positioned the camshaft sprockets. Now at this point, we can start laying the chain. And it's, what's really nice about this is that it's a colored link system. Okay, colored link, colored link. So you cannot mess it up, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our crankshaft sprocket, we're gonna align uh, the color link, the single color link, you see it right there, blue one, with the dot. We're gonna hold them together, and then we're gonna lay the chain. So we'll keep it on there just like so. Make sure it's still aligned. Simply splines up with the crank, and then we'll start laying the chain around the sprocket here. Okay, and it's gonna be pretty tight. And they can kind of see where you're at on here, how far off you are, okay? 
what you want to do is make sure everything down here is nice and tight. We're still aligned with that dot. Tight, 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 tight. This is the slack side. This is the tight side. Just make sure it's tight all the way up. And then you start splining it with the sprocket. As you can see with the positioning on here, we're actually a few teeth off. Okay, so we're going to have to turn this back to line up with our chains on here. So everything lines up just right. So again, we're going to loosen the bolts on the camshaft holder. Just a turn or two. Okay. And then we're going to turn our camshaft sprocket until we get to the approximate position. So we'll take it off of here at first so we don't turn anything down below. You can see it's nice and tight. And we'll turn it back. Too tight. We want to loosen it just enough so it moves. Like that right there. Now, let's see what this is. All right, so right there we're aligned, but you can see our slack on this side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it left. So we pull that slack out of it, and then we'll tighten the tool again. Make sure it's snug so it doesn't pop back on us. Yep, you can see it's kind of a pain to do it this way, but this is the official Ford procedure. right there you go so down below here we're still lined up we pulled tension on this side we're wrapped around we're spanning the timing mark with our two blue links and all our slack is over here okay so we're looking good at this point again like I said before the the colored links lining up with the marks is the most important and that you're, you're pulled tight on this side. Everything else can kind of just be where it's at. No big deal. As long as these marks are lined up with the chain, we're good to go. It's that simple. So it's kind of foolproof. We'll go ahead and tighten these on the cam holding tool so it doesn't cause any problems. There we go. Everything looks good. Wrap around tight. And then we'll go ahead and install our tensioner arm. And the one that goes on the driver's side has this little ear to it. You see that ear right there? That one has an ear to it. The other one doesn't. So this one goes on the driver's side. So we'll simply put it on just like so. Kind of center it in the chain, okay? And then for this build, uh, the customer requested we use the old style cast iron tensioners that are ratcheting, which is always a good idea. And these ones are from Melling, so they're really high quality. Look at the finish on there. And yeah, these do work on these engines, even these newer ones. So you simply slip it into the pocket behind here. Okay. And it's always a good idea to change your tensioners no matter how they look. These tensioners, especially the plastic ones, are what cause all the problems in the timing system, all the noises on your engine, all that stuff. So you wanna change them whenever you're in here, no matter what. So we'll snug these down at first. Okay, make sure we're still centered in that pocket with the plunger coming out of here okay chain centered all that good stuff we can go ahead and pull the grenade pin 
like that. And that'll keep tension on it for us. And then we'll torque down these two bolts for the tensioner. No matter if it's plastic or cast iron, we're gonna torque them down to 18 foot-pounds. So I'll set these and then I'll recheck them. So we know we're good to go. Now, once the driver's side is fully timed, as we just showed in detail, you want to repeat the same exact procedure on the passenger side. So it looks a little something like this. Now, if I didn't mention it already, these timing chain tensioners are different side to side. So the passenger side gets the R and the driver's side, it gets the L. Now, once everything is timed, what you wanna do is go over everything and do a post check on here. Make sure everything's lined up, centered, torqued down, uh, grenade pins are removed, all that good stuff before you just start buttoning up the engine once again. So we'll go over this one real quick so you guys can see exactly how yours should look so you can kind of refer back and forth and make sure everything's right and tight. So we'll start over here at the passenger side cam sprocket. You can see we're lined up on there. With our marks come down around. We're centered in our tensioner guide arm. We have the right hand tensioner on this side with our bolts torqued to 18 foot-pounds and the grenade pin removed. We're centered in the guide, centered in the guide. And then you come down here, wrap around the crankshaft sprocket. You can see we're lined up the blue link with the time mark. We come up and around and there's no slack on this side at all going up. Now the same thing on the driver's side, okay? So what we'll do is we'll get you in here. You can see the marks are lined up. Come down. We're centered in the, the tensioner guide arm. We have our bolts torqued, pin removed. And we're centered in that pocket right there. It's very important. You come down. Wrapped around. And usually with a camera like this, or um, a mirror, you can see we're lined up with the dot. And then we go up, no slack on this side at all. And everything just lines up. So that right there was the entire Ford approved timing procedure for the 5.4 liter two valve Windsor engine. And as you can see, I mean, everything turned out just perfect on here. Everything looks really nice and clean, nice and new, timed perfectly, good for another 150, 200,000 miles. The only part of it I didn't like is all the fidgeting with the cam sprocket on here, loosening the cam holding tool, moving it a little bit, trying to align it, moving it a little bit, loosening it, tightening it, all that good stuff just to get it aligned on here. The way that I do it, the only change that I make to the Ford approved procedure is once the valve covers are off, I come right in here and I start removing all these roller followers with the removal tool. Get them out of here. Now what that does is it actually frees up the cam and closes all the valves. That way there's no chance of the valves accidentally hitting the pistons or you being out of time and hitting the pistons or anything like that. And with them out of there, with them closed, there's no chance of them hitting, right? So you can turn the crankshaft wherever you want. You can turn these wherever you want when you're timing it by hand to get everything aligned perfectly. It's much, much easier and actually safer. Um, so that is an option out there for you guys uh, if you don't want to deal with that holding tool and everything else. Now, there also is options out there, are options out there uh, for the budget conscious, you know, do it yourself or owner of the vehicle or a technician just starting out or whatever, you can time this engine without all those special tools that I showed you, okay? Let's start off down here at the crankshaft. Now remember we used that special holding tool, that aligner tool that aligned the crankshaft to that nub in the block, okay? What you can do is turn the crankshaft and align it to the pan. So you see right here, the 11 o'clock position of the keyway, that's a little hard to gauge. Whereas the timing mark right there in the bottom, 
is supposed to be at the six o'clock position. Well, the pan's right there. It's pretty easy to gauge right around the six o'clock position. The saving grace with this engine is you get that close, right? Set the crankshaft. Well, it's a colored link system. So once the links are, are lined up and then all this is pulled tight on this side and wrapped around and then lined up here, same thing with this side, you're pulling it tight, 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 and we're lined up. The links are what actually time the engine and make sure everything's in time and correctly. So that's your saving grace. And now the other option up here, if you're not removing the followers and you wanna keep the, everything in there, you again can use a, a vice grips on the camshaft right in here like, like we did earlier with the camshaft holding tool. You can use that instead of the, the holding tool. Then as far as turning this, uh, this camshaft sprocket right here, if you are using the vice grips to hold it and keep everything in here, what you can do is use this special tool right here. You see this? Yeah, it's a standard 3H drive. There's actually a little pocket inside of here and it locks right into there. Regular 3H drive. So you can get in there and just turn it and move it as needed to line up the marks on there. Okay. So there are options out there. And even, I think there's other uh, 5 4 uh, two valves that use a bolt in the front. They're not pressed on sprockets. Well, that has a bolt on the front. So you can just use a regular socket and, 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 a, and a ratchet to turn those. Okay, so there are options out there in case you don't want to purchase all special tools. But I will link to the cheaper versions of those special tools, uh, you know, down below in the video description, uh, so you guys aren't lost and you have everything on hand in case you just want to play it safe and use the special tools. Real quick, real important tip here: when you go to install your front cover, you got it all cleaned up, your new your new gaskets inlaid in here, everything's good to go. You're ready to get it in there. Well, make sure, make sure you put the, your tone ring back on. Don't forget your tone ring. You're gonna be cursing. You're gonna be so mad at yourself if you put everything back together and forget that tone ring. So slide it back onto the crankshaft. You can see it keys in right there, one way. And also, very important, make sure you can see those words right there, front. Make sure you can read the words front because there is an orientation to this tone ring and that'll make sure that's on there and good to go. Now, when you're installing the front cover and even the valve covers, you need to add extra sealant um, at the T-joints. So here, there, right there. You wanna seal it right there, sealant glob there. Down here at the pan where it meets. Here, coming up, same thing over here, and same thing right there. Now, once the cover's on, it's torqued down and all that stuff, which again, I'll have all the information down below linked to you guys so you know exactly how to do it. Once that's on and you start putting the valve covers on, same thing, engine sealant glob, um, where, let's show you on this side, it's a little clearer, where the front cover, it bolts to the block, this joint right here, glob, and then same thing here, glob once the front cover's on, and then you can lay down the valve covers and that'll seal them up. Now, once everything has been double and triple checked, looks like it's all back together, or oil is back in there, coolant if you drained it, all that good stuff. You wanna leave the crankshaft sensor disconnected, and then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna crank the engine until you get some oil pressure over here. it is now once it pops up like that that just means there's you know 10 psi or so in there so you might keep cranking another five seconds after that start building pressure in there after that you can come over here out of the vehicle and reconnect that crankshaft position sensor once connected we can go ahead and fire the engine take a listen make sure it sounds right and then we'll shut it down and check the oil level Sounds good. 
Just a little noise from the power steering. Otherwise, it sounds real good. Let it run for five, 10 seconds, and then we'll recheck that oil level. And there you have it. That is how you time the 5.4 liter two valve Windsor engine. Now, like I said, the inside is all the same throughout the model years, how to time it, all that good stuff. It's on the outside, all the stuff it takes to get to the inside of the engine uh, that, that is gonna change depending on the model you're working on and the year you're working on. So that's why I didn't include that information in this video. But the timing part is the most critical, the one that most people need help with. Speaking of, I hope this helped you fix your Ford yourself. I'll see you next time, guys.